the world teach us? What is the best source of calcium in the world? Milk. You have to get your milk. Now, I'm not going to deal with that in detail. We'll be doing that tomorrow. There's an interesting lecture coming. Don't miss that for anything in the world. It's fun. It's called Utterly Amazing. Uh, but low absorption of calcium is what you get from milk. In milk, only 25% of the calcium in cow's milk is actually absorbed by the body. 75% goes in and straight up. Human milk, although it contains less than half the calcium of cow's milk, is a better source of calcium because of its high absorption. So here's a difference already. And then kale, that's that green cabbage leaf, turnip greens or sesame seeds are better sources for the same reason. So those are your good sources of calcium. Anything that's dark green is a good source of calcium. Have a look at the acid loads in food. Fish will give you an acid load of 7.9 milliequivalents per 100 grams. That's quite high. Bread will give you 3.5. Flour, 7. Pasta, 6.7. That's lower, but still reasonably high. Uh, if you come to meat, it goes to 9.5. Now, when you go to cheeses, low-protein cheeses, 8. And high-protein cheeses, that's mature cheeses, generally speaking, 23.6. That's a catastrophe. That's a catastrophe. How are you going to neutralize that acid load? The answer is, fruits and vegetable give a negative acid load, so that is positivizing. But unfortunately, the body reacts to acid in one way only. When you get it into your diet, there's a hormonal response that kicks in, and you get calcium stress. So here is average urinary pH when you fed rabbits soy versus casein. This is an experiment that we did. And you'll see that soy gave you a far more alkaline uh, urine than casein. I actually had my students go out and do a test. I made them test the acidity of saliva and of urine of vegetarians, non-vegetarians uh, in the society, and I made them also test Rastafarians. Rastafarians are vegetarians who believe in their religious ritual that they must use a lot of marijuana and drugs, but they're vegetarian. <laughs> and we found something very fascinating. All the vegetarians had an alkaline urine, and uh, the non-vegetarians had an acid urine. And the vegetarians had an alkaline saliva, but not the Rastafarians. They had an acid saliva from the dope that they were taking. And the, the meat eaters had an acid saliva. So they were acidic from the word go. Total fecal calcium. When you fed these rabbits foods, the ones that were on casein, that is the, the protein in dairy, that went straight through, Shoop, out. So they didn't absorb it if there was casein in the diet. They had soya, they had a much better rate of absorption, in fact, twice as high. Uh, urinary calcium, so even that which they did absorb, when they were on casein, they urinated it out. You see, the body has to protect itself against the acid, releases a lot of uh, antacid, which it gets from the bone, and that's calcium carbonate deposits being put into the, into the bloodstream to neutralize the acid, and then you have to urinate it out. Sometimes we release so much of it from the bone to neutralize the acid in our system that the kidneys cannot cope, and they cannot release it. Then you have to precipitate it. Where do you precipitate it? In your joints and all over these places. And then what you get is you get stiff joints and you get gout and pains and arthritic diseases and all of those. All products of the type of food we are eating. So this is the type of food where you will get a good 
plant protein source that will not be osteoporotic, calcium releasing. There's the soybean. You can soak it and freeze it and use it whenever you want to. Greens such as kale, broccoli, bok choy are as good as milk in terms of calcium absorbability. There are all the journals that confirm these experiments. What you see on the screen there is your calcium source. Have you ever seen a horse run after a cow and say, excuse me, could you satisfy my calcium needs for me today? Yes or no? No. There's only one creature in the world that does that, and that's man. You think cats do it? Or do we induce cats to do it? Did you know that the veterinary societies in the world have issued warnings, do not feed your cats milk, because they get kidney failure from the high acid load that it produces, and then they start urinating blood, and then your cat dies. So take away the plant proteins from your cat, and it will not get it. So not even a cat should have it. But humans, well, who cares? They can have it, right? So these are your calcium sources. Now, let's have a look how phytoestrogens help bone. Like estrogens, as we said, the osteoclasts become less active. So a woman is not likely to get osteoporosis while she is in the flower of her life. But when she goes through menopause, that's when the trouble starts. Isn't that right? And later on, when they fall, they break their hips. Now there's a, pro there's a compound that you would like to get, and that is the compound genistein. You find it in soybeans, but somewhere else also. That suppressed the activity of the bone dissolving cells. So you want to have that in your diet. Ladies, you want to have genistein in your diet. Where do you get it from? Soybeans, amongst others. Several studies have confirmed that phytoestrogen genistein is almost as effective in preventing bone loss in animals as premarin, which is one of the most commonly prescribed hormone replacement therapies. So genistein is almost as good as that. But this one causes cancer, and genistein doesn't. Which one would you prefer? Just, just asking. <laughs> just asking. So how do you get enough of that? Do you know that seed? That's flaxseed. Flaxseed. Flaxseed is the highest source of genistein in the world. So if you eat flaxseed just like that, it goes in there and out the other side and goodbye. So what do you think would be a good thing to do to flaxseed? Grind it. Put it in a liquidizer and go, <laughs> then you have ground flaxseed. Put it in a bottle, put it in your refrigerator. When you have breakfast, when you have muesli or granola or one of those in the morning, take flaxseed, a teaspoon or two, and pour it over it. If you have porridge, put it over there. Put it in your bread, bake it in there. How many points did you get for flaxseed? Five. Now you know why. And men, it'll help you be more cognitive, help your brain function, prevent prostate cancer. So it's good for the men too. Improved mineral content and density in a bone. A Danish study which found that soy milk containing naturally high levels of phytoestrogen actually stops bone loss that would otherwise occur in women after menopause. Women who consume two glasses of soy milk daily delivering 50 milligrams of isoflavones over the two years, did not lose bone from their spine. So it's advantageous to take soy milk rather than cow's milk. Cow's milk will cause bone loss. I'll prove that to you as we go on. We did a lot of research on osteoporosis. In an Australian study conducted at the Royal Women's Hospital in Melbourne, postmenopausal women experienced a 5% increase in bone mineral content when they ate 45 grams of soy grits every day for three months. Just including soy in the diet solves the problem. Estrogen impersonates blockers. So phytoestrogens are able to impersonate estrogen because of their similar molecular shape. And uh, these phytoestrogens are very selective where they dock. In other words, the receptors that they go on. We have receptors in the bone. We 
have receptors. Women have receptors in the breast. Men have receptors in the prostate. We have receptors in our blood vessels. We have receptors in the brain. And you want these compounds in there. There are two types of estrogen receptors. The one we call alpha, and the other one we call beta. And estrogens normally dock to both of these equally. So estrogens will dock to any one of them. Uh, but given a choice, phytoestrogens prefer beta. Now, this is interesting. This is very desirable since beta receptors are found in bone, brain, and blood vessels. So if you have a diet rich in phytoestrogens, if you put soy milk on your cereal in the morning or on your granola, that'll help your brain, your bone, and the breast. Women, you cannot afford to go without this stuff. And uh, that's where you want it to work. By the way, Korean women. Korean women are known for the fact that they don't experience the typical Western menopause symptoms. While the Western women are hot flushing and exhausted, the Korean women are, after retirement, off overseas on holidays. And, you know, people say that all the soy will cause mental debility. Have you heard of that one? Have you ever read that soy products cause brain problems? The contrary is true. They say your kids will become stupid. My question is, why do the Koreans win the Mathematics Olympiad every year? Because they are quite sharp up there, and their diet definitely contributes to that. 